In this series, we'll learn how to use Blender's 3D and 2D tools to create this awesome toon shaded scene. We'll be modeling and texturing and even using the grease pencil tool for our 2D character. So let's jump right in. Tip tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tipta and to this Blender series where we've been working with the 3D and 2D tools to create a complete scene from start to finish. Last episode we added some nice details to our scene and animated our 3D elements. If you haven't watched the episode then you can do so here. In this final episode we'll be working with the grease pencil tool to add an animated character into our environment. Great. Let's jump right into it. All right, so it's finally time to take a look at our 2D animated elements using Grease Pencil. So first things first, we're going to turn off all the modifiers that we don't need because we want to be able to watch our animations back in real time. So I'll press A to select everything and I'll just use this Modifier Tools plugin to turn off all the modifiers. Then I'm going to turn back on the curve for both of these objects here. And also on our plane down here, I'm going to turn on all of the modifiers, including the grass for now, just because when we draw our character, we're going to need to know where the edge of the grass sits. And it's important that we have the modifiers on for the ground plane because we need to see where the bottom of our sand is so that we don't accidentally draw things that are clipping through it once the modifiers are turned on. Uh, we're also going to be interacting with this rock and this rock. So I'm going to select both of them and turn on all their modifiers. But the rest of them, we're not really going to interact with. So that's fine. First of all, then let's create the water base. Now I'm going to shift right click to move my 3D cursor to roughly the height that I want the water to be. Then I'm going to shift A and choose new grease pencil blank. So we're going to make things easier for ourselves by going to our overlay options here, turning on onion skin and canvas like so. And you'll see now that we have this kind of grid around our 3D cursor. Now, when you create a grease pencil object, you can then tab into something with control tab uh, called draw mode. There's a few options that you need to make sure you set up properly. First of all, for this, we're going to have our strength of our brush set up to one and we're going to turn pressure sensitivity off. And we're also going to turn off um, sensitivity for the radius as well for now. Uh, we'll also need to make sure the stroke placement here is either set to origin or 3D cursor, surface or stroke. And we'll be using basically the top three of these for different uh, parts of our grease pencil project. For now, you can leave it to origin and the angle at which you will draw, you'll need to set to top. And you'll see then that even if you rotate your camera, your grid stays at the same angle. So no matter what angle I draw from, okay, the line is gonna be completely flat. Now, if I were to set this to view, you can see that it rotates with my camera view. So if I were to draw, say, um, a square and then rotate it and then another square and rotate it, you can see that it's actually drawing based on my view angle. We want to draw in top view for the water. So we're going to change that to top. Let's go to top view mode as well so that we can see exactly what we need. And down here in this new squiggly line option in your panels is going to be your grease pencil properties panel. And this is your layer stack. And these layers work in the same way that Photoshop or Illustrator layers will work. Whatever is on top will show above whatever is underneath and so on. Obviously, that's not the case for your 3D environment. So we're going to make this one called water base. We want to turn off use lights because we want to just maintain the color. I'm going to go to my materials options now and you'll see that we have one material here called black and you don't see any of your other materials that you made for 3D elements because you get unique 2D materials. So we want to create a new material here. We'll call this material water base and we don't want that material to have a stroke, but we do want the material to have a fill. And the fill color for the material, we want to be one of the blues from our color. So let's click that and let's eyedropper this lighter blue. So now when I draw in my scene, I will have a completely blue. And as you can see, it's fully 2D. There's nothing underneath it. Let's tab back into object mode with that base layer set up. And I want to move this down in Z space. This is the whole object. Move down in Z space until the top of that rock peeks through over on the left there. But we don't want our water to be completely opaque. We'd like it to be a little bit see-through. So over here in the layer palette options for my grease pencil object, I'm just gonna drop this opacity down to say 0.8. Good thing about grease pencil as well is that if you decide you wanna change your materials, obviously they will all update based on any changes you make, whether you've used them in the scene or not, in exactly the same way that your normal materials do. And we're gonna leave this alone for now. I'm gonna do a really simple bit of animation to get ourselves started because if I did this whole animation in real time it would take like eight hours for this tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an instance of animation for each type that we're going to do. Drawing on a surface, drawing along a plane, drawing along the view, all that sort of stuff. 
And then I'm going to just in time lapse mode, obviously do the real animation because that'll just take bloody forever. So what we want to do is add some simple splashing to the uh, water around the rocks here. Could add some to these rocks around the edge as well here if you wanted to. I'm just going to do one rock for now. Shift right click the, the tip of this rock to move the 3D cursor there. Shift A, a new grease pencil blank. And it should be set up still that in draw mode, we're still drawing along the top axis and all of that. So let's go back to object mode. And I'm just going to G and Z and then hold shift until you'll see that as soon as this in object interacts with the water, the grid disappears. So put it just slightly above like that. Then we'll go into top view mode again. Let's control tab now into draw mode. Now, inside this grease pencil object, you'll notice that we don't have the same layers or materials because it's a completely different 2D animation workspace. And that's a really powerful thing about grease pencil objects. So this one I'm gonna call ripples. We're not gonna use lights on that layer. I'm gonna create a new material that we're also going to call ripples and for this one let's have a fill with no stroke and let's make that completely white and let's drop the opacity of this layer down to say 0.7 making sure that i'm on frame zero of my timeline here i'm going to go to the dope sheet which basically shows all keyframes in the scene okay and then underneath dope sheet we want to show our grease pencil keyframes and you can see that we have a keyframe here on our first frame. And using my ripples brush on my ripples layer, I'm just going to start drawing out my first set of ripples. OK. You can see now that we have a keyframe here on frame zero. Let's move that to frame one. When I move to frame three, because let's animate this on twos. And if you don't know what that means, then, you know, watch some of my animation series. But it basically means every second frame, we're going to redraw a picture. Uh, I can start drawing now. But you'll notice that the previous frame doesn't disappear automatically. That's because you need to hover over your timeline here, press I, and then choose insert keyframe for only selected channel. And that will make sure that you're only working on your ripples channel here. So I only selected channel that will create a keyframe for that and you'll notice your objects disappear but i can't see my previous frame you'll say that's weird i have onion skin on and then you'll go down to here to your onion skin settings and you'll be really confused because you know you should be able to see so maybe you'll try changing the color to like red or, or the next frame to green and you're like oh maybe the opacity isn't high enough i can't see it this baffled me for a while turns out <laughs> it's a bug i think because if i close bender and reopen it I immediately get my onion skin. If you don't get that, if you see your onion skin, great, the bug's been ironed out. If you don't, just reboot and open Blender. Luckily, it saves exactly the interface where you were, so you'll still be in exactly the right place. So now we're on frame three. We can see our previous frame is now red because of our onion skin color settings down here. So I'm just gonna draw slightly outside that. And we're just going to extend our ripples a little bit away from this rock, okay? We'll go to frame five. We'll insert a keyframe for the selected channel. And let's just have these start to break up at this point. And I'll just keep doing this until my ripples disappear. All right, so you can see now that we have some real nice ripples coming out from the edge of our rock. And if we change angle, we can see that they follow the surface of our water here, which is really nice, okay? So what if you want this to loop over and over again because you don't want to draw it forever? So I'm going to say, this is a good speed. I'm happy with that. And then I want it to pause for a few seconds, maybe to frame 30. Let's insert another keyframe on the selected channel because that's going to now add a effect, effectively work as our pause before the next loop starts that we're going to add. Now over in object mode, I'm going to add a modifier called time offset to our ripples here. And this is going to be for the whole grease pencil object. So if I go back in here and add more layers in this same object for other ripples and other rocks, we have to take those into account when we do this time offset. What I'm going to choose is a custom range. I remember I set it to frame 30. So I'll do frame one to 30 and we'll leave keep loop on. And what that means is between frames one and 30, it's just going to keep looping that ripple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go around now and add some more ripples to the rest of my water. And I'll do those on individual layers, okay? So back in draw mode here, on top of our ripples, I'm gonna add another layer called uh, ripples two. <laughs> and we're gonna use the same material for that. This is the ripples material. So around these rocks here, I'm just gonna start drawing myself some new ripples. And I'm basically gonna continue the same process that we did before, but on a bit of a larger scale with kind of all of these um, objects here, all done at once. So over to frame, frame three, we'll insert a new keyframe and we'll just have these 
extend out a little bit. So I'll just fast forward through the rest of this because it's the same process. All right, so as you can see, we've now got some basic ripples around our rocks here. And if we look through our camera, for example, and move our camera over, you can notice that no matter which way we look at them from our camera as well, um, these ripples will stay in the same sort of place along the top surface of your water. One thing though, however, is that um, individual grease pencil objects don't respect transparency between other grease pencil objects, which means that whilst we can see them on top of the water here, we can't see them underneath the water. Though if we were to move this underneath the water, the opposite would, would be true, if that makes sense. So we'll be dealing a little bit with that later on as well when we create a splash and we'll be switching between objects to do our keyframes. But I'm pretty happy with that. That's looking pretty good. These are background details, so I'm not going to spend too much time on them. So that's how to draw a basic uh, grease pencil animation along a plane, okay? Now there are two other things that we'll be doing in this animation. We'll be doing a grease pencil object which is sort of um, facing the camera view and we'll do another grease pencil that is mapped to the shape of a surface so that we can have like a splash effect as our character jumps into the water. So let's take a look at the first option, the character option then. To do that we need to set up a bit of basic camera movement for our first shot. Perhaps we can do something like the camera sort of creeping towards the character from over here and then when we have our second shot it's going to be a close-up of the character. I'm going to select my camera. So let's make sure that we are in object mode first of all okay and we have our camera selected and we are on our timeline view here. And I'm just gonna press I for insert keyframe. Let's keyframe the location and rotation of the camera. So let's have our camera move forward slightly. Let's go to top view like so, and we'll just move the camera forward a touch like that. And that seems like a good ending point for now. So we'll keyframe the uh, location again here. And now we've got a camera that just moves forward ever so slightly over the course of two seconds. Pretty fast though, so let's slow that down so we've got a camera moving over four seconds. I'm going to select all of these frames here, right click and choose, uh, let's just do it for the, these last frames, uh, interpolation mode linear. So that means it's going to start slowly and then it's going to maintain that speed until we cut to a different scene. Let's temporarily select our ground plane and under the modifiers, let's turn on everything apart from the particle system or including the particle system so that I can intelligently choose by shift right clicking the location for my uh, grease pencil object. Let's do shift A and add in a new grease pencil blank. This time when we control tab into draw mode, we want the um, drawing plane to be the view plane because we're gonna be looking at this through the lens of the camera. So we know that that plane is locked to the camera view, essentially. Under the animation tab, you might find it easier to see what you're doing. And in draw mode for this object, you can change it from view to front. And then when you go to object mode, rotate your object so that it is looking directly at the camera, like so. And now you can see that your front view is going to be camera facing. I can say um, snap to orthographic front view for our character here, like this. I can draw in draw mode. And in object mode, you can manipulate it around in 3D space. Like this until you get what you want. Like, for example, his little paws dipping into the water, making sure that he's perfectly positioned and any changes that you make here um, are not going to affect the angle of the final shot or anything like that if you accidentally move the camera. Back inside draw mode for this guy, we can start adding a few placeholder keyframes. So on frame one, he's drinking. And let's say on frame three, if we insert a new keyframe on this channel, another interesting shortcut as well is you can isolate this object in the environment by pressing a numpad forward slash. But if you don't want to see all your other stuff in the background, you can work with just this guy by himself in isolation. So you can have him dip his head a bit and maybe have him flatten his ears as he's drinking. So he's going to hunch his body a bit more. His tail is going to be on like a constant wave into the other direction. So he's now drinking with his little head down, but we obviously want that to take a while. So let's move that over to say like frame 13. Now you can see we've got our camera movements and we can draw a few roughs without having to worry about it breaking by accidentally moving the camera or anything like that. I want to now move this portion of the mesh a little bit up because uh, I've drawn it too low. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm just going to move it around um, by pressing A to select everything and then 
Z just to move that up and then control tab back into draw mode so that I can continue drawing the rest of his body because he's going to raise his little paws up a bit and his tail is going to slink downwards as he thinks he detects danger. Then just before the camera cuts, say frame 92, let's have him start to stand up as he's going to try and like meerkat his way out of the situation by looking up over his shoulder and perking to see what's there. His ears will start to move upwards, his paws front paws at least or one of them will leave the ground his back will start to arch as he prepares to lift his little weight up and the tail will continue to move downwards now at this point we've got our guy drinking then he starts to see something and then the camera is going to cut so we'll move that back to frame zero so it starts at the beginning starting to drink in the stream that seems good now let's go back to our layout mode select our camera Frame 92, he's coming up. From 97, let's have it uh, cut to a completely different shot. Something like that. So let's select the camera. Let's keyframe location and rotation. And because there's a one frame difference, that's going to be a cut. And let's have it take maybe this many frames to just move upwards a little bit. Keyframe that location. And what we've got there is a cut that goes up and settles in to our character like that. I want to change the speed of this camera movement though. So let's go to our graph editor and normalize those. And if we twirl down object transform and we've got Z location here, you can kind of see what's going on. We have a big snapping movement and then like a linear kind of movement here. Select our Z location and lock everything else so we don't accidentally select anything else, right? And we want to go to our speed Interpolation mode, let's do um, Bezier and let's shift this handle by dragging it and then pressing X to lock it to the X axis. Move that over and then we've got this little whip upwards that feels a bit more natural because he's going to rise into this position to look over his shoulder. So we're happy with that now. Let's go back to animation view. Select our um, object here and go into draw mode. Boom, we've now got this. One last thing that we've got to do is that we are now going to need to keyframe the rotation of our 3D uh, of our 2D object here. So um, under Dope Sheet, we can um, go out of Grease Pencil mode and just choose Dope Sheet mode. And we're going to select our boy, and we're going to keyframe the rotation once. And on the next frame, we can keyframe the rotation again. Let's go out of our camera. So we go into, into top view again rotate so that he's looking at the camera. So for those who don't know what I'm doing there is I'm positioning the mouse in front of this yellow dot to create a straight line between it, pressing R to do the rotation. And then what that means is this line basically represents the angle of the camera or close enough. And then I just move it to the back of the camera cone. And now what that means is our plane pretty much aligns with our camera. And then I will obviously keyframe that rotation in. So now we've got a rotation that changes as the camera does. So when we go back to animation mode, our dude is now looking at the camera in this shot as he moves upwards. Let's say frame 100 ish, he's going to need to now stand up. So we can tab into draw mode here and we can draw our guy standing up. So let's press I down here on the selected channels and let's stand our guy up. What we can do is make sure that we're happy with his position in the frame uh, for this final shot by tabbing into edit mode, selecting everything, and we can just move him into position a bit more. You want him looking into the space that um, he thinks the threat is coming from, obviously. He's a bit slow. Let's have him whip up a bit earlier by moving these keyframes. Obviously, it looks a bit janky here, but if you look at it in the camera, that looks really nice. So, go ahead and drink him. Here's a noise. What was that noise? He doesn't know. And then we're going to cut to the final shot where our character is going to sort of jump into the water from above. So back in layout mode, let's go to camera view around about here, frame 140. Let's move this camera above our guy like this. The guy was just looking to the left, so we'll position him left here. So that's looking pretty good, but I reckon for this shot, it's probably easier just to make a new creature object rather than continue to try and use this one uh, for a completely different angle. Go to your um, animation frames, at, say like frame 140 for this guy, and in draw mode, obviously, 
uh, we can just press I for new keyframe on selected channels and then at frame 140 that guy is going to disappear all right back in layout mode what we need to do now is just go to where our creature is and we need to press shift s and just choose cursor to selected which is going to make us put a new grease pencil object in exactly the same place let's do shift a new grease pencil blank and we'll call this blank which accidentally put inside the rocks scene collection there creature two we will tab into drawing mode or animation mode rather and on our creature two we can tab into draw mode and choose the plane to be top we can draw the base of our creature i think about that sort of size will work that looks pretty good uh, and you may have to ever so slightly just as before just shift this guy up in the scene so that his little booty doesn't get clipped through that land there as you can see um, we'll have his little tail bunching up like this his little head is here because he's currently standing up so his ears are kind of like that and he's going to launch himself into the water essentially so he roughly looks like this at the moment. So you can see at the moment, even on this level here, his little tail is still clipping through the earth. But the good thing is because this is completely 2D, you can of course just move him upwards until his tail is not. Now, if you looked at this in the layout mode, and not inside the camera, oh God, uh, there we go. You'll see that he's actually now kind of floating, but it really doesn't matter because you're looking at it through the camera. So uh, in animation mode with the camera preview, this will look totally fine. So what we'll do is let's say go to our dope sheet view and we're going to animate the position of this element. First of all, let's go to say frame 200 and let's pull the camera back upwards. So let's go into the camera view like so and let's go to G, Z and then Z for local and we'll just have it scale up ever so slightly and move so that I don't have to fix that plane up object there we'll keyframe location and rotation again even though we didn't technically use rotation this time cool so that looks pretty nice just a slow drift out okay let's select our grease pencil object here and let's keyframe its location then say as he's looking around he's going to choose to jump into the water so we'll keyframe its location there and then we will move it leaping into the water and then at this point we're going to cut to a different angle anyway. So let's go then to location here. And now we've got him kind of jumping like so. And we're going to need a splash that appears in the water here. What you can actually do as well is if you wanted to, you could move him down to the surface of the water and then keyframe that location so that you've got that jump. So that his finishing point ends up closer to the surface of the water. Obviously to animate this guy jumping, you just need to add a few frames. All right, so we now have a rough of our guy jumping into the water, sploosh, like so. So we now need to animate a splash around his entry point into the drink. All right, so we now have our little guy jumping into the water, or at least the rough of it. What we need to do now, the final type of um, grease pencil animating you can do is drawing along the surface of an object. Okay, and we're going to use that to really easily create the splash effect as our guy hits the water. We need to bring a shape into our scene that we can map our grease pencil object to. So uh, I'm just going to uh, shift S and move the cursor to my selected object. And then I'm going to shift A and I'm going to bring in a new mesh. It's going to be a torus. Let's twirl up these options here and we're going to create a shape that kind of has a donut that is roughly the size of our little dude. Let's increase the uh, minor segments so it's a bit of a smoother shape too. Uh, and a major radius that is a little bit further out. So like a nice chunky donut. And what we're going to do is draw some objects that splash around the curve of this torus. Once you're happy with it, I'm going to position it so that it lands at the place where our dude hits the water and it's already half intersecting with the water which is perfect for us okay i don't know if this actually matters but i'm going to shade smooth it just because i hate seeing those squares and we're going to call this one splash base then we'll need to create a new grease pencil object um, so this time we will now shift s cursor to selected shift a uh, grease pencil blank then let's tab into drawing mode so inside the draw mode of this we're going to change from origin to surface okay and what this means is 
we can now draw, if I draw a stroke, just a random wibbly wobbly stroke everywhere, you'll notice that as I move the camera around, it's kind of adhering or curving around the surface of that object. Now it is floating outside the object here. So what we need to do is make sure we have turned our offset down here to zero, or I like to do 0 0.01 so that it's not actually interacting with the mesh. However, here's something really important. Let's set this offset to one, draw a line, and then let's zoom in and we'll draw another line. And you'd think that those would be at the same depth, but no, in fact, the offset is based on the amount of zoom level that you've got. So to control that, what I like to do is to set it to either zero or 0 0.00001, which is going to basically have no distance, no difference, no matter how far zoomed out you are. It doesn't really matter because we're going to be hiding this donut, but just for peace of mind and the sake of control and stuff like that. As our dude hits the water, I'm literally just going to draw a couple of splashes. And these are going to be rough ones. And I'm going to keep turning my camera around and I'm going to draw a complete circle of different levels of splash. Bam. And we're on frame 168 because that's where this splash is going to start. And I'm just going to hide for now the viewport. So you can see that these splashes are in a perfect circle, okay? Roughly around the point where our dude has entered the water. So let's go to the um, grease pencil animation view down here. Go back to a similar view level, bring in our splash base again. Let's move over two frames to frame 170, keyframe, and let's just move these up a bit. They're gonna splash quite violently at first as they fly through the air. So we'll increase the splash significantly. And the good thing about this is splashes tend to, or at least in cartoon style, go in these circles anyway. So the fact that we're following the map of this torus naturally is super useful to us. All right, so now we have our guy landing, splosh, and we have some water following the shape of our donut. And if I turn this donut off, you'll see that we get a splash that follows the shape of that donut. Man, very nice, okay? Obviously, there'll be ripples that follow after that splash has landed along the surface of the water, but we already know how to do that by just adding more strokes to our ripple object that we made earlier, okay? I may choose to add another shot from underwater to this later on. Um, I haven't decided yet, but I think that'll do for now. So we've got our guy down here taking a drink. He notices something. And he's like, oh, hell no, I'm out of here. Splosh. Okay, so here we have our finished rough pass of animation here. Um, <clears throat> you can see that all I've used is just the basic black brush to uh, create all the proper roughs that we need for our final artwork. All the final artwork I'm going to do again in fast forward mode because it's going to take forever to do it, but I will show you how I set up um, a single frame of finished art so that you can see it with all the line work and colors and things like that. Uh, we're going to choose just one frame from this close up shot here, this final position, frame 129. So I'm going to select my character here and go to the animation panel. So let's isolate that by pressing um, forward slash on the numpad with it selected. And then I'll just use Alt and middle mouse to flick uh, so we're in orthographic view. So in this view, if we tab to draw mode, um, you can see that I'm going to need to add a whole bunch of new layers to my grease pencil object to facilitate doing all of the coloring correctly. So with my layer selected down here in my summary, I'm just going to add a bunch of layers on top and we'll start calling these base color. We'll call this shading, we'll call this line, and we'll call this highlights or something. Yeah. Each of those we obviously want to turn off use lights for. And the first step is on my line work layer to do my neat line work because that's going to inform where all of the colors go. So I'm going to lock every other layer and I'm going to take my rough layer here and I'm just going to bring the opacity down. My original rough layer I've completely hidden. Additionally, I'm going to temporarily turn off my onion skin so that I can just see the line work that I need to see and I'm just going to start doing my line work. Great, so that's my line work for this frame done. Uh, let's start adding some base colors in. To do that, I'm gonna need some new materials, obviously. So let's go to our materials panel. Uh, let's temporarily exit isolation mode so that I can start looking at my color palette, uh, 
which we will just make visible. Um, and I'm going to create a new material. Um, we'll call this one um, fur. Let's turn off the stroke, turn on the fill, and let's eyedropper uh, a nice, perhaps this nice dark blue. And even if we don't like these, we can change them later on. This brush I'm going to call shadow, and that's just going to have a black fill. Then we'll create a new brush for light. That's going to have a fill of a slightly lighter blue. Let's just choose this blue here. And then we need uh, one final material called eyes. That's also going to have a fill. And let's choose this nice bright green that we've got here. I think we will need one more actually. And that's just going to be highlights. And that's going to have a fill of just pure white. Okay. So back in our layer palette, in isolation mode for our creature, let's start coloring this guy in. You can use the paint bucket tool. But the paint bucket tool will take into account all of your uh, existing visible line work, including rough layers. So for example, if I go to my base color layer and I choose my fur material and I try to fill in, you'll notice that it will take into account my shading or my sketch layer. So we just need to turn off that visibility and bam, all of a sudden you'll be able to fill in your character with no trouble. Obviously there are points here that I haven't connected my line work stylistically. And there are also points where it's not going to fill in completely perfectly. Okay. And you can play around with your precision or your dilation settings to fix that. Um, but what I like to do is just get a base color in there like so. And then I can use my drawing tool, my pencil tool to just come in and clean up like this really easily. With that on our base colors, we're now going to need a layer for our fur light. So I can turn my rough layer back on and I'm going to temporarily turn the opacity of my color layer down so I can start to see some of the details. Like for example, here, I'm going to need a belly for my guy. So we've given him some belly fur there. And apart from that, I probably don't need the opacity lowered anymore. So let's turn that all the way back up uh, to one. Now um, I'm going to need my white brush and I need to do my eyes. So we can fill those really easily because they're completely closed. Now that's taken into account the rough layer again. So we'll make that invisible. And then we need our shadow, which again is 100% um, opacity brush. And we control the opacity for our um, materials via our layers. And what that means is I can use the same brush for the pupils as I will for the shadow on the later layer. Just makes material management a little bit easier. We'll need him to have a little blue nose, of course. That's looking pretty nice. And the inner sections of his ears as well. So for example, trying rather than trying to trace that section there, now that I've closed it off, I can just fill it in with the paint bucket tool. So you can see a combination of um, each of the tools usually works best for this sort of thing. Okay, uh, I can go back to my fur layer here where I've ballsed up this line and just fix it like so. Uh, and do the same thing down here where I've ballsed up that line, et cetera, et cetera. That's looking pretty good finished there with the base colors. So on our shadows layer then, um, I'm just going to select my highlights brush here. And you'll see that if I wanted to, I can add in certain things like rim lights. I can go to the edge of my character like so and add in a little rim light. And if I change the layer uh, blend mode to something like hard light, you can see that you get a really nice style rim light on it. And you can play with the opacity on this to control the strength as well. However, if I do use my shadow with 100% opacity on hard light mode, it can always look a little bit strong, if that makes sense. So what I'm actually gonna do is rename this one to pupil. Okay, we'll duplicate it. And then we will pull that shadow. And we'll just make sure that we've got both of these here by selecting pupil as well. So we've now got both um, options available here. And in the shadows material opacity, I'm gonna bring that down to about 0.3. And then you can see we get a much less strong shadow effect. That's looking a bit nicer there. All right, so let's go back to people um, on our base color layer and make sure that I've filled in. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, I'll just add a few more highlights by making sure I'm on the right layer, locking all the others. Whether I'll have highlights or not in the final thing, I don't know yet, but just to show you what that workflow might look like. I'm just gonna add in a few here. So let's add in some shadows on his tail. Like that, that looks pretty good. The only issue with doing um, shadows this way is that if you need to uh, correct yourself, maybe add in an extra part, 
you do get overlapping because the opacity is on the brush rather than the layer. The way to uh, solve that, of course, is to, if we just undo all of our shadow strokes here, uh, the way to fix that is to put the opacity of your shadow back up to one, go and create yourself a new layer, we'll rename this one to highlights, and we'll put our shadows on a separate layer, the opacity of which has been lowered, and then you use a full opacity material. So let's change that blending mode to hard light. And then you use a uh, full opacity material to draw your original shape. And then when you touch up, it's obviously going to use the same opacity controllers. So completely up to you how you do it. Final thing then on my base colors layer, I'm going to go to my eyes material and I'm going to change. Final thing then, and I probably should have done this before I colored the eyes in, um, but I forgot, is to add our guys pupils sorry our guys irises and we'll just add those pupils back in that looks good and then on our very top layer highlights here which we're going to unlock i'm going to select my highlights brush which is just pure white and we can add in some highlights to the eyes okay so now we have our first fully colored frame now obviously that took a little while but uh you will get faster as you go and also you won't be explaining it each time so yeah what i'm going to do is just go through my animation now and color everything i like to do all the base colors first and then i'll go back on a second pass and add the highlights and things like that just find it a little bit easier of course at the at the moment as well the only frames i've got in my scene are my holding keyframes i haven't done any of my in-betweens or anything like that so welcome to the world of 2d animation right takes a while <laughs> um but every other frame done in this um style is done exactly in the same way so we're just going to fast forward through all of that uh, and i'll see you on the other side okay so here we have our finished 2d grease pencil animation now the final thing you need to do once you're happy with your work is to of course export it now i recommend exporting your sequence as a series of images and you can do that by going to your output settings or output properties scrolling down to the output section and choosing png as your output properties uh, this will give you a series of images that you can then compile into a single video using whatever software you like. Um, After Effects Premiere, there's even a way to do it in Blender. And then you can compile those images together into uh, a video. If you want to skip that step, however, you can, of course, change your file format to FFmpeg video and the container to MPEG4. And this will just give you a MP4 video as soon as you export. Uh, the issue with that is if your computer crashes halfway through, then you'll lose the whole video and you have to start rendering again. Regardless of the output settings that you choose, you can just go up to your render options here and choose render animation to render your entire animation completely. That will open up this additional window here in which eventually you will see all your frames being rendered and this might take a long time, uh, usually up to about 30 seconds per frame on my PC with all of the materials and particle effects and things turned on. Once that has finished however you will have a folder full of PNGs or you will have your finished mp4 file and that's it. All right, and there you have it, a completed 2D plus 3D animation workflow in Blender. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial series. Um, if you did, let me know make, if you want me to make more and things like that by commenting, sharing your ideas, sharing the issues you had with it as well, because uh, like I said at the beginning of this entire series, um, I'm still learning Blender and this is just the way I do things. I'm in no way saying that this is the best way to do things. There may be way faster, way more efficient ways to get stuff done that I'm just missing. So please do pop those in the comments. I'm always eager to learn. Congratulations on getting this far. If you've made it, really well done. Most people do not. So you are definitely the exception. And thank you very much for sticking with me for this long. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time on TipTap. A gargantuan thank you to my level two and above members without whom this channel would not be possible. If you'd like to support Tip Tuts so that we can continue to grow, please consider clicking that join button below for exclusive perks and benefits. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.